My name is Amber Lodiger Reichert, and I'm a web developer with the University of Virginia's Miller Center. With me today is Waldo Jaquith, Director of U.S. Open Data. In addition to being the founding director of U.S. Open Data, Waldo has a long history in web technology and digital communication. Would you tell us a little bit about U.S. Open Data? Sure. U.S. Open Data is a nonprofit organization that works with uh, government and also some entities in the private sector, uh, organizations generally that have data but don't quite understand how to share it effectively. So we, at no charge to them, partner with them to help them figure out how to make the most use out of information that they're holding closely that perhaps they could share. Well, as you know, in the course of building presidentialcollections.org, we've been encouraging organizations to share data about their collections online. And we've been understandably encountering some hesitance about why should I open up my data? Why should I make it available? Can you explain a little about the benefits of making data available online? Uh, there are a handful of benefits, generally, you know, generically speaking, to making data available online. Um, one of them is that, uh, particularly for academically based organizations, that that's simply how information is shared uh, in 2016. That's, that's what it looks like uh, to be a library, uh, is to figure out how to share your information most effectively with uh, the people who, who need to have it. And so publishing your data online is just a really great form of outreach these days. Um, another reason why it's really helpful to publish data is it facilitates collaboration. That when an organization has uh, core data that is useful to others. It can be a lot of work to do something with that. There are certainly lots of libraries that have valuable data that they just haven't had the chance or the funding or the time to build something interesting with. Mm -hmm. So by sharing that raw data that they have, it gives a chance for others to work with them and to collaborate on it. Because otherwise, the world doesn't know that you have mm -hmm. that data. They don't have that opportunity to work with you uh, for everybody to benefit. So open data can be a really great way for organizations by publishing that data to benefit from it in ways that perhaps they just don't have the resources to do on their own. So what, what is meant by open data? Uh, there's a distinction made between open data, data, and information. Uh, so uh, we can imagine, for instance, weather forecasts. Uh, information about weather is if you're watching the Weather Channel mm -hmm. or you're looking at the newspaper and it says tomorrow it will be 72 degrees and, and cloudy. That isn't data, meaning it can't, nothing else can be done with that other than reading it on a piece of paper or watching it on television. Data would be if you were to receive a, a file from the National Weather Service that describes in machine-readable format, here's the weather for tomorrow, it's, here's the high, here's the low, here's the, the cloud cover, and so on. Data can be transformed into many different formats mm -hmm. in ways that makes it much more powerful than information, uh, which is generally static. You, you, you can't make any changes to it. Open data is data that is not just held closely by an organization, but instead available to others, uh, meaning not just that people have the ability to look at it, but that they have the right to make a copy of it and to do things with it. Uh, and ideally, they don't have to pay anything for that. But what unifies open source, open data, open access is this philosophy of openness. The idea that if your job as an institution is to spread knowledge, these are all wonderful vectors for spreading knowledge that are ultimately going to be better for that organization, often in ways that are hard to forecast up front. So I, I encourage organizations that are, are nervous about providing their data openly to experiment. You take one collection that doesn't need any conversion or software written for, and you figure out how to go about publishing it on your website or partnering with somebody who can help you to do that, and see what happens. And maybe nothing happens, and it was a waste of your time, in which case you find that out easily, <laughs> much more likely is you publish that data and you, you find out that it's useful to people or even to yourself mm -hmm. in ways that, that hadn't been forecast before. There are a lot of open terms being tossed around these days as far as open data, open access, open source. Could you shed some light on what the differences between those are, the difference between open source and open data, for example, uh, and where open access falls into that, things like that? What all of these terms have in common is they're all rooted in the academic notion of sharing information. Mm -hmm. That you gather information and then you publish it. You know, that is, that is the, uh, the mechanism of, a lot of academia, is publication. So 
what a lot of open is about is the idea that you should continue to publish, but not just your results, but all of your data so that it can be available to others as well. So when we talk about open data, uh, we're talking about making uh, raw information available in a format that computers can read via a website or in some format like that. With uh, the open source, we're talking about software that can read and write that data. It's about also making that software available and the, um, the computer instructions that make it run, um, making that available to anybody as well. Um, less applicable, I think, to, to a lot of academic institutions right now, certainly than open data, but important. Um, open access is so important, particularly in the, the realm of um, academic research. Open access is about publishing papers and the results of research and data, not just in a, a journal that somebody has to pay a great deal of money to subscribe to, but so that anybody can read it. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly a, a cause of librarians uh, and people who feel enthusiastic about sharing data information. Mm -hmm. As long as important knowledge is locked up, uh, on, on websites or in, in private journals, you have to pay a lot of money to access. So you really limit the impact. Uh, so we're seeing a real move, particularly in federal funding here in the US, at saying, if you want to do research with our funding, fine, but anything you discover, all that data and your conclusions need to be published as open access. What would you say to an organization that hesitates to post material online for fear of making themselves obsolete. Uh, someone who might say, well, if I put this online, then no one will have a reason to visit me. Uh, how would you respond to that concern? There are very few organizations who only has holdings that are electronic. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmingly, uh, organizations, particularly libraries, that have data, it's just a small part of what they have overall. Mm -hmm. So by taking the data that they're holding on to and sharing it, it's a way to tell the world, here's a little bit. If you like what you see, we've got a whole lot more here. Mm -hmm. Another really important reason why small organizations should, should uh, publish their data openly is that it can be difficult for many people to know that you're out there, to know that you exist. Mm -hmm. And so by putting your holdings available online and by sharing that as much as you can, you cast a really wide net. So anybody searching the internet for a particular uh, piece of information or to find out something that's in your holdings, mm. well, now they're going to find that. Now they're going to find you in a way that otherwise would have been impossible. As we're talking about posting data online and metadata online, are there certain data formats that you tend to evangelize more than others? Or are there tips or formats that you think people should be using? Yeah, there are formats I think people should be using. But so much more important is if you're going to publish data just publish what you have. Just start with that. Mm -hmm. So if, if the data that you have is in an odd format or not many other people know how to use it, that's fine. Start with that because that's something. And if you have the resources to have the, really the gift of flexibility to be able to wonder, hmm, I wonder what format I should convert my data in to be more available to people, that is a wonderful problem to have. Um, at which point it really depends on what you're publishing. Um, particularly when you get into uh, scholastic works. Sometimes they're very specific formats that are appropriate for that field. Generally speaking, though, the formats of XML, extensible markup language, and JSON, JavaScript object notation, are two really great formats to use if you have the choice. But publish what you have. And if that goes well, maybe you can get the funding to uh, enhance your offerings. It sounds like you're making the case for collaboration and growth as a culture and as a knowledge base. If we put these things out there, we can work together more effectively. Yeah, a funny thing often happens when publishing these sorts of things openly, that there are smarter people in the world that know more about the thing you're doing, whatever your topic of research is, than you do. But they don't know about you necessarily, and you don't know about them. So by providing that raw data, they can do fascinating things with your data that wouldn't have occurred to you. And that smarter person might well be you in five years or 10 years. <laughs> I, I really like working back, looking back at the work that I did a few years ago, because it always looks bad. Hmm. But my work wasn't bad then, it's just gotten better. And the same thing happens to everybody. So a great thing about opening up your data is you're not just opening it up for others, you're opening it up for future you. Is there anything else that you would like to add? It is scary to move to publishing openly. There's a comfort in knowing that whatever mistakes exist in your data, 
that, oh yeah, you'll get around to fixing, you just haven't yet, that maybe only you or your organization knows about. And you have to get out of your comfort zone a little to decide to publish that openly because other people can see your mistakes and that might be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, it turns out nobody cares. Worst case, they'll fix it for you <laughs> because it's open and they can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, best case, they benefit from everything else you've done that is right. As humans, we're really bad about seeing our flaws and we're generally uh, uh, particularly bad <laughs> about seeing what we do well. Mm -hmm. We can't balance those well. And so like when I look at my data, I just see the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I forget how much of it is really great and wonderful to people. So I encourage people to get over that initial scary hurdle and just publish something, a, a, a data set, and see nothing terrible happens and nobody will make fun of you. Mm -hmm. And you and your organization will be better for it. If someone wanted to find out more about US Open Data, how would they do that? Our website is at usopendata.org, uh, where we write routinely about best practices in open data with a complete how-to guide and how to open your data, a guide for reluctant bureaucrats. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome.